In this news class, we look at abortion in Spain. The 2010 law on how late terminations can be carried out is under appeal in the Constitutional Court, and the Justice Minister has spoken about reverting to a previous law, which wouldn't mention cases of malformation of the fetus. We'll be talking to Dr. Perez Pedregosa, a prenatal specialist, after this report from Carlos Marlaska. Spain's current legislation on abortion has been in effect for three years. We spoke to someone who had her own experience with it. 37-year-old Carolina Barreyes, a Madrid lawyer and mother of a 14-month-old daughter. Pregnant a second time, things happened differently. She was one of 3% of cases in Spain in 2011 of people having abortions after the 14th week of pregnancy. I was at week 12 when I had the first major ultrasound scan and something wrong showed up in my baby's bladder. Then for the next five weeks, my baby's condition got worse, spreading into the kidneys and the lungs. Then I didn't have any amniotic fluid left. This made the outlook really hard, not good at all. I kept hoping that everything was going to be all right and that what was blocking the bladder of my fetus would disappear. So I waited till the last minute. I took the decision in the 16th week. If the law had not allowed an abortion after the 16th week, I would have had to decide earlier. Carolina is a Catholic who voted for the governing Conservative People's Party. She says the choice for her was very difficult, not one she ever thought she would have to make, and she thinks the law should stay as it is. I think women should always have the right to decide during a defined number of weeks, after which, as in my case, we must support the right to live. The law provides for later abortions if a fetus is developing with any malformation. But an association that defends people with disabilities, while it takes no position on abortion, sees basing the extension of the period during which an abortion may be performed legally on the word malformation as discriminatory. The association's president says Spain's law of 2010 extends from 14 to 22 weeks, the allowable time to perform an abortion. It doesn't use the word disabled, but another word that suggests disabled. This is unequal treatment. Unfavorable, based on a disability, even if the law, because that would be politically incorrect, doesn't say disability. That's what we're against. Joining us from Madrid, Javier Perez Pedregosa, a gynecological specialist in maternal fetal medicine and director of the ultrasound and prenatal diagnostical unit at Sanitas La Morelleja Hospital. Buenos días, doctor. Buenos días. Dr. Pedregosa, in your daily practice, you deal with pregnant women who come to you with serious malformations of the fetus. When can you tell that the fetus won't live outside the uterus? And what do you do in a case like that? It's possible, but not always straightforward, to diagnose the malformation of the fetus when this is very serious or when we have a fetal anomaly that is incompatible with life. With the means at our disposal today, we can make this diagnosis to a high degree of certainty. With the law in Spain today concerning the voluntary interruption of a pregnancy, the so-called Zapatero law of 2010, is it possible for a woman with sound scientific support putting her mind at rest to resolve a malformation, or is the law too lax? In my opinion, and that of many prenatal diagnostics experts, which we have expressed several times, we don't think the law is too lax, but rather that it offers a solution for situations that come up. What the law changed fundamentally is the possibility when there are malformations of interrupting gestation after the 22nd week, but always in two very specific situations. When a fetus has been diagnosed as unable to live, this is generally clear, and the diagnosis has been done late for various reasons, such as due to progression of an illness or because of the technical means we have. When there is a very serious and incurable illness, a clinical committee has to decide on the difficulties. 
The current law allows an abortion after 22 weeks in some cases of serious malformations. How is a decision taken then and by whom? Three specialists in maternal fetal pediatric and neonatal medicine form a committee appointed in each of Spain's autonomous regions. They decide case by case whatever is presented to them, with, in my opinion, a great deal of scientific rigor taking all elements into account, not only the couple but also the unborn child, the fetus. The Spanish Minister of Justice, Alberto Ruiz Gallardón, has said that he would remove the malformation provision from the new law he's preparing, and then said he would keep it in some cases. Is it scientifically possible to keep the malformation clause in the new law? It is possible, but very complicated, since in medicine we always talk about sick people and those who aren't sick. Cases very often are very different. A fetus with a heart malformation may evolve very differently from another fetus which appears to have the same malformation. Sometimes there can be a combination of things. It seems very complicated to us to create a law. There will definitely be a lot of cases that are not thought through. Can you think of a case? obviously without naming anyone, where the problem was solved under the current law, where you think the one that we had before couldn't have helped. We have cases with names. The new law of 2010 let us convince the parents more or less, while explaining it would be good to evaluate the fetus a few weeks later. That new evaluation let us see that the malformation was still there, but it hadn't got worse, and that let us continue with the pregnancy. There are children who've been born thanks to this possibility to wait past the 22nd week before a decision is made, a decision which is hasty in our opinion. Doctor Pedregosa, especialista en diagnóstico prenatal, muchas gracias por sus aclaraciones. Muchas gracias a ustedes.